Gleamer and H. Arnold Seinberg were Canadian philanthropists and connoisseurs who, over the course of more than five decades, assembled one of the great collections of 20th century modern and contemporary art. They both played a very large role in McGill University. Gleamer was a professor emerita, having been a professor there for over 40 years. And Arnold was the chancellor for a number of years. Both of them had an extraordinary curatorial eye. They collected the works in this collection from dozens and dozens of different sources. They followed in the footsteps of more than 50 private collectors, including Dr. Paul Gachet, Van Gogh's doctor, Gertrude Stein, Vincent Malzac, storied provenance time and time again. Many of the works have been included in major museum retrospectives. What is extraordinary about the Steinberg collection is the quality of the works. More than 100 works that are represented within the collection. Mark Roscoe, Agnes Martin, Robert Motherwell, Ken Noland, Morris Lewis, Helen Frankenthaler, of course, and so many more are at the very, very highest caliber. When you see these exquisite artistic achievements, one after another, they exceed every expectation that you could have had when you saw them in reproduction. And to see them all together in concert is something we won't see again. The heart of the Steinberg collection provides an utterly compelling account of the artistic innovation that took place across North America in the post-war decades, spanning diverse strains of abstract expressionist, lyrical expressionist, color field, hard edge, and minimalist movements. There was tremendous synchronicity to these artists. The Steinberg collection is an incredible portrait of that period of art history, and it provides the most exciting and critical re-evaluation of how these artists related to each other, the discourses and relationships between them, the aesthetic conceptual parallels, but also makes us look at the individual works in completely new ways. Mark Roscoe is, of course, held up as one of the great heroes of abstract expressionism. In a way, that's ironic because he denied ever being either abstract or expressionist. These are fully resolved paintings, vestiges from the final year of his life, the summation of everything that he had been striving to achieve throughout his career, his interrogation of form and color, depth, and most importantly, boundary. The way that oil behaves on paper is fundamentally different. There is an immediacy and an urgency. And in many ways, there's some parallels with the color field works on canvas. It's the sudden, urgent flex of a brushstroke that really define that kind of vibrating edge. We have to rethink our hierarchy of media when we consider Mark Rothko's latest output. The Robert Motherwell Elegy from 1976 was completed in 1979, just before its exhibition. When you look at closely at the surface of this painting, there is exactly the same immediacy of gesture. Again, we see this incredible adherence to quality. It is an elegy, his most famous iconography that he had initiated over 20 years before, inspired by the Spanish Civil War. And when you look at the brushwork in the blacks, the overpainting of the whites is really exceptional. It's a standout work. The Agnes Martin is from 1981. This is the moment in her career where she comes as close to interrogating color as she does anywhere else. Untitled number 12, at a full 72 by 72 inch, so the largest format that Agnes Martin worked in, shows these very beautiful pale lines and blue and red and yellow repeated and that edge defined, in this case, by colored pencil and the very careful application of gesso. The collection includes two monumental paintings by Helen Frankenthaler, which are quite stunning. She was so innovative, pushing what paint could achieve. Newfoundland, it is the most intense, stunning array of cobalts, turquoise, alongside coral and yellow. It's a beautiful panoply of a really kind of ocean-like color. Afternoon and its sheer scale and the vibrancy of the many yellows that are aggregated on top of each other. It has tremendous contrast because there is also a very heavily built up impasto, which is almost metallic in texture. From the early 1960s, Ken Noland famously described himself as a one shot artist. That notion that really you only get one shot at getting it right, in his case because he was working with thin down pigments on stained canvas that he couldn't really rework afterwards. These color field artists, all of them adhere to this model, to this idea that you've only got one shot. They have the immediacy and the freshness of an unrepeatable moment.
While the interest in post-war painting might be at the heart of the Steinberg collection, of course all of that is born out of the extraordinary achievements of modernism through the first few decades of the 20th century. And that is where they started their collecting in the artists of the École de Paris. You have the titans of modernism. The collection mirrors the great achievement of art history in the 20th century, which is the migration from the figurative to the abstract. An incredibly important early work on paper that directly parallels Demoiselle d'Avignon by Picasso. And you have the most extraordinary sensual nude by Matisse. There's a beautiful and ethereal head of Diego from 1958 by Giacometti, which typifies his interest in the human form and his existentialism. One of the revelations of seeing a collection as the prism of the collector's eye is that love for geometric form and pure colour can be represented across centuries. And Bleemer and Arnold Steinberg also collected the most exquisite Chinese monochrome ceramics from the Qing dynasty and seen in concert particularly with the Kenneth Nolans and Morris Lewis and the Jack Bush these shapes and lines is incredibly resonant and suddenly you see these ceramics reinvigorated with life and form. Clement Greenberg was one of the great modernist art historians of the 20th century and his central premise in his critical writing was that great art couldn't exist without the art of the past. Greenberg had, of course, been the primary ambassador and champion of abstract expressionism. He always called painterly abstraction. And this new generation, he actually coined post-painterly abstraction and had a famous exhibition in 1964 in Los Angeles, which included many of these artists. In what's often regarded as one of the seminal critical texts of the 20th century, his modernist painting of 1960, he said, art is, among other things, continuity and unthinkable without it. Lacking the past of art and the need and compulsion to maintain its standards of excellence, modernist art would lack both substance and justification. <laughs>